Hey, welcome everyone. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to connect a Google Stadia controller to a Bluetooth device, like say, I don't know, a tablet or your computer over a Bluetooth connection to do some wireless gaming. Uh, if you wanna see the written version of how to get this done, you can find a link to my website in the description. So with that said, before we dive into it, there are a few things that you must keep note of. The first is absolutely crucial and the most important, is that to get this done, it requires you to connect to a Google uh, Stadia website in which it connects to their tool and activates Bluetooth on the controller. That tool is only available online until December 31st of 2023. So if you're watching this video after that, you're most likely out of luck um, because that tool goes end of life. Kind of like how Google Stadia did, ironically. Um, all is not lost though if you miss out your opportunity because you can still connect it with using a wired USB connection. It's not wireless, but hey, it still gets the job done. A few other minor notes which should be a given, but I'll explain it anyway is that even if you get Bluetooth working on this in the cutoff time by Google, there's no guarantee it's gonna work properly with your device. Now my PC, I was able to get it connected to Steam and it worked just great, but your experience may vary depending on which app or device you're connecting to, so keep that in mind. So in order to activate Bluetooth mode using the Google Stadia tool, you must have 10% charge battery on the controller available. If it's sitting in a drawer like it has for me for over a year and a half, it will take a while, so just get that done. The next, of course, is you wanna to try to use the USB cable that came with your controller, as preferred, um, just because you, it's less likely to run into sort of connection issue and you can't get this up and running, um, but that's just my two cents. Okay, so now we're ready to dive into the steps, but one last warning is that when you activate Bluetooth mode on the controller, there's no way to revert it back to the way it was before. I'm not sure you would wanna care about that, but just something I want to point out that once Bluetooth mode is activated, it's set permanently in this new mode which is well, a good thing actually. So to get this done, you wanna use a Chromium-based browser. Chrome, of course, is the preferred browser. Edge will also work. Uh, to be honest, I use Brave Privacy Browser, which is based on Chromium. It worked just fine for me on that browser. So uh, just keep in mind that Chromium-based browsers are preferred, but Chrome, of course, is the de facto from Google. And in your Chromium-based browser, you wanna to navigate to stadia.google.com controller. I'll put a link to that URL in the video description so you can simply click on it and it's just easier to get to. If you are kind of concerned and kind of iffy about clicking links on websites you're not sure about, I get it. Safety first, you don't want to download a virus. You don't have to trust me. If you're concerned, just go to google.com and search something like Google Stadia Bluetooth controller. Uh, most likely it's going to be the first URL that I mentioned. You want to open that up. Okay, so from the Google page, what you want to do is click switch to Bluetooth mode. Obviously, that should be a given. But before you do that, you can read some FAQs at the bottom if you are concerned about anything. Um, but this process is pretty straightforward. And from here, you do want to click on switch to Bluetooth mode. We're not looking for updates. We're not really concerned with that. We want to simply activate Bluetooth mode. So that's what we're going to accept these terms. And then what it's basically telling you is that you want to connect the controller to your computer, which you should have done. And the next window, you're getting a warning of what to expect. Basically, when you click allow Chrome to verify, you're going to get yet another pop-up in this same browser window and it's gonna list a device. That device is gonna be your Stadia controller, which could be listed as one of several things, something like SP Blanket RT Family, USB Composite Device, or Bootloader. When that happens, just simply connect on the device and then hit connect. It's gonna verify that your controller is working and intact, and then from here, you wanna unlock your Stadia controller for downloading a new firmware. At this point, what you basically wanna do is unplug the controller from the USB cable. Then you're gonna press and hold the menu button, which is basically the three dots on the controller, while connecting the USB wire at the same time. If for some reason that the lights turn on, unplug the controller and try the step again. The third step basically listed here is that you need to press four buttons at the same time. That's the menu button, Google Assistant button, A and Y, all at the same time. And when you do that, if it's successful, nothing's going to happen. The controller will not vibrate, there's no lights, no nothing. I personally, when I did this on my own, I pressed it for about uh, three seconds, all four buttons together, and just hit next step and it worked just fine. And then get another similar warning saying, hey, you're gonna get yet another pop-up window, listing your controller and you're gonna hit connect. At this point, what it's basically done is downloaded the Bluetooth uh, update. And now this last step is we're gonna actually install it. So you're gonna hit allow Chrome to install once again, select the controller, and the name might've changed the controller, that's perfectly fine and normal, and hit connect. At this point, this is where the actual firmware is being installed. This is actually kind of flashing the controller, if you will, with this new firmware update. Be patient, do not unplug anything, don't touch anything, just leave the controller and computer B. Um, in my experience, we're gonna fast forward this, but it took me about uh, 30 seconds. 
and you should get a prompt something like this. And now if at any point it did fail in any of these steps, just try the steps all over again. Go from the very beginning at stadia.google.com slash controller or basically better yet, just close your browser altogether or open a new browser incognito or private browsing, whatever your browser calls it. Go to this URL and try it all over again, right? You have nothing to lose because, well, the, clearly you're here to get Bluetooth working. It's not working right now. So what do you have to lose? Nothing. And on this last step, you're basically getting steps on how to activate Bluetooth pairing mode to connect to whatever device it may be. Um, step is super simple. You're gonna basically press and hold the Y button and the Stadia button to get the same time. And depending on what color you, the Stadia button flashes or emits, um, it will indicate what kind of Bluetooth status you have. So continuing on with a Windows device, I'm using Windows 10 just to show you. Uh, just hit the Windows button at the bottom left or on your keyboard and then immediately start typing Bluetooth and then you're gonna to navigate to Bluetooth and other devices. Uh, hit add Bluetooth at the top, add a Bluetooth device. You're gonna wait for it to appear. And for here, here you can see it's Stadia is the number one result. Click on it and it'll connect and that's it. For my testing, as I mentioned earlier, I went straight to um, Steam and activated big picture mode. It's usually the icon close to the top right. If you hover, it'll tell you that. Big picture mode is, it's exactly like a, it's kind of like a full screen mode, immersive full screen mode of Steam, if you will kind of tongue tied there a little bit, sorry. And um, I just keep pressing the, the buttons on the controller and I'm actually using the controller to navigate everything right now. So it's being recognized. Um, you can go to the settings menu and kind of change some of the button mapping if you will want to do that. It's completely up to you, um, but that's pretty much it in a nutshell. And that's pretty much a wrap. As I demonstrated, I got it up and running with Steam in big picture mode and it works just fine. So, but again, your experience may vary depending on what you're connecting with. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to check out my social links and website link in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.